Never been to California Never been to LA So I'll stay home me is I'm gonna wait for the last minute to do absolutely anything and so when I got a message from YouTube and they were like you either come back or we're demonetizing your channel say less okay I'm coming I was coming I worked way too hard to get this channel monetized for it's just poof go away. We worked. You worked. You've been here. You put in hours. Hello. So here we are. I have lots of life updates. We're not going to get into everything now. I'm going to give you a few like off the top things. Hold please. One, I totaled my car in November. Smashed into pieces. Two, Zayda no longer lives here. I've occupied his space with an office. Three, I got lip filler. We can talk about that a different time and I'll tell you all about it. So part of the reason I can't let this dream go too is because a couple of years ago when April was on YouTube, YouTube and she was working hard and all she wanted to do was collaborate with these brands and make the money that she's making now and I don't know that influencer was ever my goal but my goal was to like create community which we absolutely did. Over the time that I've been gone I've got to work with brands like Chobani. <laughs> Who? Hello? Urban Decay has sent me some things in the mail. I've worked with, you know, other smaller brands. Good Molecules has sent me PR packages. Well, I've gotten packages from perfume companies. I've just... I took on something that I so badly wanted to see play out and then it did and I did not bring you along with me. And for that, I'm so sorry. The bond that you and I created, you've just built this foundation together and that has literally followed me over every single thing that I've done. Anytime I bring it to the internet, y'all are so quick to support me and I love y'all for that. I did photography for a little while, kind of still do. I'm not supposed to be doing it, but I do it. This social media, like I've launched my own I haven't launched it yet because I haven't announced anything, but when I do announce it, I know that you guys are going to eat it up because y'all just support everything that I do and I could not be in the position that I am to have my own business and work for myself and be at home every day and still live a life and get things from brands and get partnerships with businesses here in San Antonio. Like I would not be able to do any of that stuff without this platform right here. I'm sorry that I haven't been here. I'm sorry if you feel like we are not like this anymore because I promise you we are. I still talk to a lot of you on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. Like I still talk to a lot of you, but not nearly as many of you that I have reached through this camera. If I'm being completely honest with you, I stopped sharing a lot of things because I felt like there are certain parts of my life that I couldn't share at the time and I didn't want to come on here and be fake about it or you know pretend like everything was fine and great. But regardless, we are here now. We have a lot to catch up on. So I had a baby, I have a whole new niece. I have so much footage from that time that I plan to present to you once it's all put together. But we are easing back into YouTube. This is our first video to do that. I know I tried to do it a couple times, but it wasn't very personal. It was very like vloggy. And this is still gonna be pretty vloggy, but it's just gonna be more personal. And I'm gonna catch you up on a couple things. If you saw the title of this video, I did wreck my car in 2000, no, 2000. Relax. In November, I did total my car. I will get into all that. And then by the end of this vlog, we'll be going to pick up my new car. So I had to deal with lots of things. But also I'm into Legos now. <laughs> I know, I know. I was gonna do like a get ready with me, but I just feel like I'm not, I don't want to. So we're gonna build some Legos and we're gonna chat about all of the bad decisions that I've made. like a little camera. I do photography sometimes, occasionally, on the weekends as a side hustle. So I got in a car accident and honestly I was more shaken up behind it than I thought it was gonna be. We already know that your girl dealt with anxiety and it just amped that up for when I'm driving. I get so anxious now and I hate that for me. In November, Zayden was still living with me. He had a friend that had missed the bus, right? So me, being the nanny and the caregiver that I am, he was like, can you go pick them up and bring them to school? And I was like, sure. So I did, I went. I went thinking, I'll be right back. I didn't take anything with me. I had nothing. Ran out of the house, kind of as I am now. So I'm driving back from going to pick up this child that is not mine. I was actually on a back road. The road kind of winds around 
and then it goes straight. So I was coming straight this way and there was a big, big, a big truck, not like an 18 wheel or anything like that, but like a, tr a truck, we're in Texas, a truck. And he's coming and I'm coming this way. And we both, the person I was with, we both looked at each other and we knew what was about to happen. Like we already knew, like there was no way. So he had lost control of the car. He had zero tread on his tires. His tires were so bald. So please, if you're driving around with tires that need to be changed, please go change them. Like it is so dangerous, especially in the city. It's wet outside, just please. So his tires are completely bald. He comes and he literally is coming like directly for us as I'm coming this way. So in front of me, if I'm driving, I'm not able to get over any further than I am because it's only two lanes. And directly in front of me, if I were to pop the curb, directly in front of me is a light, a street light. So it's obviously in cement. And if I would have popped the curb, I would have went straight into that cement block, which would have crushed my front end and probably would have made things so much worse than they were. There was nothing that I could do. So I let go of the wheel, it literally happened in slow motion. So he comes and he T-bones the side of my car. Instantly my ears are ringing, my airbags go off, my windows are shattered. I look over at her, she's fine. And I'm like, are you okay? And she's like, I'm okay, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm okay, are you okay? And there were like, yeah, we're fine. Like everything is fine, like we're good. And so <laughs> obviously we're extremely shaken up behind everything that's happening, but we're safe. The guy who hit me didn't come check on us to make sure we were good. Another guy came over and peeked his head in the window and he's like, are y'all okay? My door is obviously jammed shut. I'll insert all the pictures. Of yeah. Yeah, no, we're fine. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, lovely. Very scary. Thank you for staying calm. If you would have freaked out, I would have. What I'm supposed to do? I know, you did good. Like, you Thank would have, like, you. The right, though, you I tried. know, I really did. I know, me too. Here's my Superman coming to the rescue. Literally. Yeah, like a big black truck. They hit me. I don't. Yeah, he's getting the stuff out of the car. Oh, he said he's skipping the class. He needs to go to class. Well, you saw them like coming like straight at us like sliding. We have airbags. Thank God for airbags. Both of our seatbelts were on. Thank God. So this is lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. But yeah, so they had to cut the airbag off of the passenger side door. And then I had seat covers on my car. So thinking straight and not being in trauma at the time, thought to, you know, roll up the seat cover so we weren't crossing over class. The guy who hit me didn't have insurance. He didn't speak English. Again, his tires were absolutely bald. There's no way that it wasn't his fault that he hit me. He said he was trying to avoid like something in the road and it's like a little black something in the road. And my thought process is if you're in a huge truck, run it over. Like, why are you doing all of that in the rain to avoid running over something in the road? That's small. So that sucked that he didn't have insurance. He didn't have a driver's license. He didn't have anything. So what are you gonna take or what can somebody give you if they don't have anything to give you? So it was a disaster. I was fine that day. That evening, I started to be in a lot of pain, like a lot of pain. And so we went to urgent care, got all the x-rays, CAT scans, all those things. I had a mild concussion. I had bruising along the entire right side of my body, my shoulder, my knee, my leg, my hamstring, my calf, my ankle, hip, my lower back, like just bruising all along the side of my body. So the doctor was like, it's gonna take like six to eight 
weeks to heal and honestly I was not expecting it to take as long as it did it took such a long time like now that the weather is bad I can like I it's it hurts still I would been out of the gym forever every time I try to go to the gym I feel like I'm in physical therapy and it's so defeating like I was so strong and I'm not even saying that like <laughs> I was so strong I'm saying like I was I was genuinely strong like I could I lifted and I am unable on the left side of my body to lift more than like 60 pounds on like a squat, a leg press, a, a bent, like anything. So that's frustrating. But the worst part about it is it gets, yes, it gets worse. It gets worse. So the reason that I've waited so long to get a car was because there's this little thing called car insurance, right? And I have always had Geico. When I say that we've been insured with Geico since, I wanna say since I bought my very first car in like 2018 like six years I've been paying car insurance to Geico. Well, I called Geico to let them know I was hit in a car accident and they're like, oh, your insurance lapsed. Excuse me? They're like, yeah, your insurance hasn't been active for two months. Two months my insurance hasn't been active because we switched bank accounts and when we switched bank accounts, I called Geico and I did switch over our renter's insurance. Well, the way Geico works, you can switch over your renter's insurance, but you also have to call and switch over your car insurance. It doesn't automatically do it for you. So when I put in my new card information, it was only taking out for the renter's insurance and it was on automatic draft. So I was just anticipating that that money was coming out and it was not. So not only was he not insured, I also was not insured. Doesn't matter that I've paid Geico for seven years because it lapsed for two months and legally they don't have to cover me so that's great um i still owed money on my nissan i still owed like two thousand dollars it wasn't a lot of money but it was still money that i did owe so i was just gonna pay off this car and not get a new one until it was paid off if you don't if you're heading to the comments to like tell me what i should have did or what should have happened we're already here we're already here it's literally fine. At the time I was extremely stressed out. I was upset, I was mad, I was angry, all of the things, right? But now, what are you gonna do? You know what I mean? Get that asset out. So that's what happened. And that's why I've been without a car for so long because once I paid it off, mind you, it was only like $2,000. So I winded up paying it off in literally no time at all, but I just haven't wanted to go sit down. What kind of car do I want? Do I want my dream car? Do I want something more affordable for the inflation climate that we're in? Like everything is so expensive now. Everything is so expensive. So do I do something responsible or do I just <laughs> wall out? And now because I've been in this car accident, safety ratings on cars are like the number one thing that I look at. Like I never even thought about it until after my car accident. It was just never something that I thought about. Like, yeah, the car is safe. Like it's fine. No, that is, that is, that is so far from the truth. So then I took to the internet as I do. And I asked you guys and I had already had my heart and soul set on a Kia Telluride. These, I loved them since they dropped. They were everything that I wanted. It was three rows. I loved how big it was. I loved everything about it. It was so nice, right? And so that's really what I had my heart set on. And I asked you guys, what do y'all have experience with? What do you love? What What is something that I should absolutely stay away from? And the amount of responses I got on that post, I can show you just responses I got on that post, it was wild. So many of you were telling me, don't do the Kia. Don't do the Kia, don't do the Kia. Forest drives, when we got it, it was a brand new fully loaded Kia Optima. They're just really hard to insure. Like insurance companies won't go near them because they're so easily, like the theft on it is so high. Ours is push to start. So when we did insure it through Geico, we did have to show them a picture that it's push to start because if not, they might not insure your car. Then everybody was also telling me, don't do the tell you rides. I've known so many people who have gotten them. They're acting up after like 40,000 miles. There's, you know, it's bad investments. I've known three people, three people who had it and they were trading it in. And then I was like, okay, so well, if I'm not doing the Telluride, what should I be doing? Look how cute this goes on the back of here. This, and then this closes. 
I, I, so I was no longer looking at the Telluride. I've accepted my fate that I'm not gonna make a bad investment. I need something extremely safe. The Broncos are not safe at all. Everybody was like, get a Bronco, get a Bronco. Have, are, are our TikToks different? We must have different algorithms because TikTok showed me a very long time ago that the Broncos are so unsafe. They have like some of the worst safety ratings, which is wild because they used to be like some of the safest cars and now they're just trash. So if you were thinking about a Bronco, don't do it because I love you. So by the time I looked into all of these different brands of cars, everything out here is trash. Nothing's going to last you the way that our parents' cars lasted them. Everything is just expensive and it doesn't last. Like it's it's ridiculous. And I like like bigger, bulkier cars. I love something that's squared off, which the Forerunner is very square, but I just, something about it just wasn't calling to me then. I was driving and every time I was driving, once I knew the car was paid off and I didn't, I was time to start looking for cars. I, every time I was driving around, I was noticing these different SUVs, right? One day I'm driving to Kerrville and I'm like, what, what, what is that? What, what is that? And it was a Volkswagen Atlas. When I tell you, my heart was like, I loved it. It was so big and I loved the size of it. And so I was like, okay. This is top, top. The safety ratings on the Atlas is impeccable. Like just test driving it, the doors are heavy. Like you are safe in this car, right? So then I finally go to look at cars. I hate car shopping. Like I've made videos on how much I hate car shopping because car shopping sucks. It takes all day. I'm always hungry. I'm always cranky. And I looked at so many, some of them, some of them that they showed me, they had captain seats. And then one of them, after I saw like the luxury one, I went and saw like a basic model. Girl. She said, I said, okay, the trunk, do I go open like the trunk? How does trunk work? She says, you have to go and open it. And then you have to go put it down. There's no automatic on the trunk. I said, that is ghetto. I'm not on these heavy ass doors. I am five foot nothing out here in these streets. You want me to go pick up my trunk? Be so for real. So everybody was like, the trunk, you're such a princess, you're such a diva. We're talking $40,000. I'm not picking up a trunk for $30,000. You can go pick somebody else. I'm not doing it. So I was being very particular because I'm not going to sign away my life for something that I do not absolutely love. So another thing about the car dealerships is they're not feminists for the most part. And me, we, in this household, the people I associate, not even the people I associate with because some of them are kind of sketchy. But anyways, my standard is we support the girlies and the gays. Like we're feminists. Like they kept asking for my husband. Then another guy, I felt like he wasn't taking me serious either. Like I asked him to look into this car for me. He didn't do it. And I'm, mind you, I'm married to a salesman. I understand the hustle. Like. I understand that like, you're earning a commission off of this. Like all I'm asking you to do is run these numbers for me. That way I can see if it's something that I want to consider, something that's in my price range and you just don't get back to me. That's crazy. Like you just don't, you just don't answer me. I didn't hear from this man for two days. Immediately while I was there across the cubicle. So the cubicles are like connected through get glass and two cubicles down, there's a girly and she has a gay pride flag in her room. And I'm like, oh, let me call and ask for her. So I call, hey, you don't know me, but I was working with another salesman there and I just feel like he's not taking me seriously. I'm not priority. And I told her I'm all for the girls and the gays. So if you would help me, I would greatly appreciate that. And then she would be the one to get commission for my purchase because she was the one helping me. So I did let her know everything that was going on. I wasn't trying to be shady about it. I just felt like I wasn't getting the attention that I would have gotten if I was a man, basically. So she was like, of course, she was like, I, I got you. Like, what are you looking for? So she checked on the car for me that I asked homeboy to check on for me two days ago and it sold. Mm, that's crazy because I asked about it two days ago and it was black on black. It was literally everything that I wanted. I wanted it so bad and I was ready to buy. Like when I tell you I'm ready to buy and you're sitting here playing in my face, like bro, be so for real. She's like, it's gone. I'm so sorry. Like it's sold. And I'm like, of course it is. Of course it's sold. So she goes out to the lot and she's like, let me see what else I have and I'll send you some pictures. She's like, I think I have something. So she sent me pictures of another Volkswagen Atlas, everything that I wanted, all the upgrades, the sunroof that I wanted, the automatic trunk, 
Um, the captain seats, three rows, like it's everything that I wanted. Even the rims were darker because I wanted a darker rim. And I'm like, perfect, can I come see it tomorrow? So I went back the next day, I went to go look at it, I test drove it, I swung that bitch in the window. And so after all the test drive, everything was fine, I for it. And it needed to go through getting like detailed and getting checked out and doing all the things. So I wasn't able to leave with it, which was fine. Again, I've waited so long to find a car. It's fine that, you know, it was going to take a few days to be ready. My thing with the other guy not getting back to me is I have to take my children to Alabama at the end of the month. And I really, he knew I needed the car to be able to do that. Look, this like shutters. How cute! He knew I needed a car to be able to do that. So the fact that you're just not, not responding to me is crazy. So I that was all taken care of. And now I'm just waiting for the okay that we can go pick up the car. And so I figured I need to tell them all the backstory as to what's happening. So later on today, you and I are going to go pick up my new car. And I'm gonna show it to you. I'm gonna give you a tour. I have some little accessories that I've already bought for it that I'm so excited to pop in. That is the journey. To getting a new car. I do need to go right now though because I need to stop playing with Legos because I do need to get some work done today. I have cleaners now. And before you start to think like I'm that girl, I'm not. It's something that comes with one of my packages that I have, one of my clients that I have. It comes with the service that I have. So um, yeah, I have cleaners and it's been life changing. It's been so good to have the extra help working. The amount that I work now and then him working too, it just works out and I'm so thankful to have the extra help. But I need to go because they should be here in a little bit. And yeah, I'm gonna finish this up. I will obviously show you this final piece and then you and I, next time you see me, we're gonna go be getting our car. So let's go do that. Yeah, 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 yeah,
a basic screen right now and then I'll have my Apple CarPlay, but this is what the inside looks like. I'm about to put all the little thingies on here and then I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. And then I also got these on Amazon and I'm so excited. They're supposed to be like car fresheners, but I am i didn't buy them for the scent. If I'm being honest, I bought them because they're so freaking cute. Look, how cute. They're these little hearts that go like in the vents of the car and I'm so excited to just pop them in there because they're so freaking cute. Um, but anyways, those are going to go in my air vent. I did pick up, so I do have Apple CarPlay, but it's not wireless Apple CarPlay, not yet. So I did get a cord and it has this cute matching little tan box. So in case I ever need an extra, I'm going to keep this in my center console as well. So I got these and then... <sighs> I also got these on Amazon. My children, not my children, Liliana specifically, this is a Dramamine. I have Dramamine and vomit bags. Specifically kid size vomit bags because they take up less space. Also she has like a, she's small, she doesn't need a big one. My kids get so car sick and I told you guys we're going to Alabama soon. We're also going to Houston soon. So we're gonna be doing a lot of driving in this car. And I just wanna make sure I'm prepared for her to have her Dramamine once we hit the road. And then in case she gets car sick, I'm gonna keep this on a hand too in the car. I have a little little sunscreen moment. Just little wipies to keep in the bag as well. Some Tylenol, duh, cause I'm just a girl and I'm obviously gonna get a headache. This is the only little lotion that they have had. I might go to Bath and Body Works and get like a, a tiny lotion, but honestly, this one smells really good. And it says it's gonna make me glowy, okay? It says glow up there. So if you see me glowing out in the streets, mind your business. A hand sanitizer, a tiny cute little native deodorant, sponsor me, let's work together, and then an elf little lip balm to keep, you know, I got my lips done, they gotta be popping now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, look how freaking cute these little flowers are. We got the phone holder installed. This is a little close to here for me, but we might pop it over there. I don't know. These little flowers are so freaking cute. I feel like they just make everything so much freaking cuter. I love them. All right, you guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm hopefully going to see you very, very soon, like next week. But yeah, hopefully we're back on this YouTube thing. If you, ooh, what was my outro? In the meantime, if you want to catch up with me, these are my socials. This is where you can find me. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Only one of the swings outside is like, moving also Liliana told me she saw a ghost in here the other day but anyways um so <laughs> I'm looking at these um I'm missing a piece I don't right here <laughs> just kidding hold oh, please um ugh, you feel really close to my face maybe you're not that close but you feel really close if I put you over here uh. okay that's so much better <laughs> Ah, oh, my hand is stuck. Ugh. Mm. What are we gonna do about this? How are we gonna fix this? Oh, hold, please. I was just talking to you forever, and you weren't even here. That's so rude. Bye, bye.